Welcome back to Hey Kentucky. I'm Mary Jo Perino and have the pleasure today of being joined by CEO and Chairman of Brady Industries, Craig Bouchard. Craig, um, we do have some updates. We've been following the, uh, the Brady Industries news for a long time now. Uh, we do have some updates to talk about. Is that right? Uh, Mary Jo, we have lots of updates. Uh, you know, at, at Brady Industries, it's a frequent thing <laughs> to have new things to talk about. So uh, it's very nice to meet you and uh, tell me what I can help you and your audience with. Well, uh, financially, I think that there's been a big question kind of hanging over Brady Industries of if you all have the money to get this project completely funded. Um, are you feeling confident about that now? Uh, I'm feeling very confident, and there's no change in that feeling uh, for the last two and a half years, Mary Jo. The company is doing great. Uh, of course, we're a cash-rich, debt-free company. We've raised over the last uh, you know, period of time, uh, $300 million of equity into our company, Brady Industries. We've, in that time period, bought or optioned 1,000 acres of land. We've bought three buildings, 200,000 square feet. We've accomplished all the permits required. We've compressed the land in East Park, Kentucky. We've positioned ourselves beautifully to move to the next level. Most importantly, we've spent, at this point, about $35 million in the detailed engineering to construct the world's 13th largest building. And most people really don't uh, have an understanding of that, but you have to have construction companies, the equipment makers, all the equipment is hand custom made for this, for this facility. Um, you have to have the engineering consultants working with the equipment people, the construction people, the environmental consultants, and everything else. You don't start building until it's literally perfectly planned. And that's where we are today. And I think that's, you know, where some level of concern has maybe come from people who saw the ground being broken uh, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, and still not a physical uh, building in place yet. Yeah, the building is actually the last part. It's a little bit about, it's a little bit like a software company. I, I once, when I was young, ran one of those. You know, you do perfect planning, you do perfect preparation so that when you begin, there are very few change orders and you proceed through. So this, this is the process of building something that's roughly one building on 40 acres, in some places, 10 stories high. It's a very very significant project. I am happy to say that all of that has gone beautifully. I think we're perfectly positioned to go forward. It's a $1.7 billion project. Um, we have letters of intent or cash or, or commitments of various types for the majority of that money now. We're, we're extremely happy about that. We're not finished yet, but hey, you know, it's been two years. Do you know how long? Mary Jo, let me ask you a question. Yes. One of the top, one of the other 13th largest buildings in the world is the Taj Mahal. Everybody knows that one, so I'll pick that one. How many years did it take to build it? Oh, I have no idea, but I can't. I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you the answer. It took 22 years. So when people are impatient after two years that, that, that they don't, don't see the whole building yet, they really ought to just sit back and relax. Uh, the project is going beautifully. It's way ahead of plan, and uh, we're extremely confident. You know, I think people in eastern Kentucky have just been so starved for something, for an economic boost, right? So they've, so the waiting is a hard part, and I, I hope you, you understand where they're coming from in, in oh, the worry I, that it, you know, in the thinking that maybe it's not going to happen. You know, generally what I say is if you don't think something's going to happen, often it doesn't. And when you know something's going to happen, usually it does. <laughs> so it's a little bit about attitude. There are always going to be naysayers until you execute your plan. So I don't worry about that. You just execute your plan. And there are thousands of people that support us. Um, no. We have now 800 shareholders in Brady Industries. The majority of them are Kentuckians, our favorite, our favorite, favorite investors. We want as many people in Kentucky to be part of what we're doing as possible. And I want to say to everybody that is one of our investors in Kentucky, thank you sincerely for supporting us. You know, we will work our hardest to make sure you get a great return. And the state the thus far state has a 250 yeah. percent return. Right? Yeah, so. the entire state of Kentucky is is financially involved at some level because of the the taxpayer contribution. I also do want to to touch on the the financial um, contributions from the, the Russian company Russell. If you don't mind to just talk about that a little bit, and and do you have any concerns with that uh, legislatively? 
I don't have any concerns at all. Rusal is the second largest aluminum company in the world. Uh, they've committed $200 million to this project and people and help and all kinds of good things. They're fantastic people. This is the creation of healthy, fantastic jobs in eastern Kentucky. And, and Rusal coming in to help us do that, I'm, I'm indebted to them for the rest of our lives. We're, we should be so appreciative of this help. It's 30 years of downward spiral between coal miners losing their jobs, steel workers losing their jobs, railroad workers losing their jobs. It's about time that we punch forward and do good things and make jobs. And hey, Rusal, the second largest aluminum company in the world helping us, everybody should be standing up cheering. And I think they will. Craig Bouchard, CEO and Chairman of Brady Industries, thanks so much for joining us.